A great man once said, be yourself, everyone else is already taken. That great man was Oscar Wilde, a 19th century Irish poet and playwright. In 1895, Oscar was in prison for his theories such as rejection of realism and delight in urban life, and also because he was gay. But I'm not here to talk about Oscar Wilde, nor 19th century poet, no. I'm here to talk about a very serious social issue that has existed since pretty much the beginning of time. Let me ask you, have you ever had a friend that just presents him or herself as someone they are not? Like they act like they are so much into poetry or street culture with their Instagram stories, or supposedly smoke cigarettes or drive cars and other things considered cool by today's youth? And that sucks. Or when you bring your girlfriend and suddenly everyone becomes a comedian? If there's anyone watching me right now that's like that, stop. I mean, seriously, if it was something good, I wouldn't have been here talking about it and telling you to stop doing it. I happen to have quite a lot of friends who are that, and that really inspired me to do this TED talk. Oh, and it's about the importance of being yourself. The importance of being yourself in public, and why nobody should judge you. Now, I realize that doing whatever you like implies breaking the law as well. No, we're all humans. Let's keep everything within the human norms, okay? Perfect, let's continue. We're all the same, right? Wrong, that's a lie. I mean, sure, we're all human beings, but in the literal way, it's not true, like, at all. We all have different features, we all like different things, we have different hobbies, we like different food, we have different opinions, everybody functions differently, that's a fact. So who the hell made the rules that females should wear dresses and men should wear tuxedos? Or hair buns are only for women. I mean, here's a hair bun. I have one. Am I a girl? Should I check my gender again? No. I'm a man with a freaking hair bun. And it looks good on me, and I like it. What I really want to tell you today is to not be afraid of who you are. You can wear whatever you want. You can believe in whatever you want. You can have sex with whoever you want. Crack jokes if you're good at it. Even if you're not good at it, crack jokes. Just don't let your life be a joke. There's a story I read and loved so much. It's a true story, actually, of Peter the Parrot. One day, Peter Parrot went home, confused and upset. His mother asked, what's the problem? He said, I have a stupid beak. Everybody else has a cool one. Pammy Pelican, Harry Hawk, all of them. The mother suggested he visit Mayor McCall. Peter did just that and said the same to the mayor. I have a stupid beak, while well, all the other guys have cool ones. Mary McCall talked for a few seconds and said, Tell me, Peter, do you like fish? Peter responded with an ear. Well, of course, a pelican's beak would be perfect for that. What about rabbits and mice? Do you like them? said Mary McCall. Peter responded with a yuck. Well, of course, the hawk's beak would be perfect for them. What about small seeds? Eh, I like them, said Peter, but my favorite are Brazil nuts. Now tell me. Would Peter be able to eat his favorite Brazil nuts if he had pelican's beak? What about if he had hog's beak? No, no, of course not. Then why would you want to be like someone else? Follow your own rules, set your own examples. The easiest thing to be in the world is you. Of course there will always be judges. Those are the people that make life difficult, especially for teenagers such as myself. Oh, those foul creatures. All the times they made people cry. All the times it made people lose their minds, and for what? Please tell me for what? What have those people accomplished in their lives other than making funny jokes of somebody's weight, condition, hairstyle, etc, etc? Don't get me wrong, there's a big chance that some of them will be rich and successful when they grow up. But I believe in karma, and what goes around, all comes around. Now, if you're a pop culture lover as I am, I suggest looking at things this way. So. For example, in my head, I am the titular character of my Harry Potter franchise. I am the hero. I am the chosen one. I save all of you from Voldemort. And where are the so-called judges, you may ask in this story? Well, here's the answer. They are not Voldemort. That'd be my math teacher. They are not even Draco Malfoy. They are the extras, the kids that hang around in the back. The ones that have no names and have no lines. The ones Harry hasn't even heard of. Oh, but they have heard of Harry, and in Deathly Hallows they cheer for him. I know they will, because Harry doesn't care what they think. Because Harry is in the spotlight. And why is Harry in the spotlight while everybody else just roams around in the shadows? 
because he is the main character of his story and you are the main character of your story. Thank you.